So now the last part. Okay. So, so far we have seen uh, in this uh, lecture, the um, GCN training paradigm, how to train and opti optimize G, uh, GNN models in general. We also explored their powerful inductive capability. And we have seen different examples, a node-based, a node-level uh, multi-regression model, and, uh, and also a graph-level multi-regression model, so two supervised tasks. And we've seen also different approaches for transforming node embeddings into uh, graph embeddings using different pooling uh, methodologies, which have you know, a few disadvantages, and how these were addressed uh, using hierarchical pooling. And there are several a new state of the art methods that address this. So, but this is just a, a simple example that you should be able to um, understand and go over uh, in detail. So now in this uh, section, we'll look at the different operations or the different, different GNN operations or building blocks that we use to create or design GNN models. So first, uh, there are many that we have seen already. Uh, so for, first, let's start with um, the first operation, so here, which is aggregation. This aggregation actually is very important because this is what makes uh, an, an, a GNN model, uh, this is what makes up a GNN model. So this is the hallmark of a GNN model. Also, I would say the message passing along neighbors. So this is also something very important because it takes into account the adjacency matrix. So here uh, I would put you know, a heart because this means Oops, so let me use a different. So this is a hallmark of GNNs, okay? So these operations are very uh, specific to GNNs. And also this one also is very specific to GNN, okay? So we have seen the aggregation, the message passing in these operations. You, you do need the adjacency matrix and here you need the adjacency matrix. And actually, if you take these out, okay, you will fall back onto the uh, regular operations that we use in a neural network. Okay, so now let's put them back here because we are doing GNNs. So first, aggregation. Aggregation is an important operation because it allows us to integrate information from both self, the self node, and also uh, its neighbors. All right, so it's a, a graph-based aggregation. This is a hallmark of a GNN model. We have seen transformation, which is transforming features. And this is, you know, a very uh, a classical concept in ML where you want to learn a better representation by extracting new features in deep learning, by building new representations and new subspaces, right? So transformation, uh, mappings, mapping one feature space onto the other or an input feature onto the other, uh, a new target feature that represents better, that reduces, you know, redundancy, removes, uh, removes no noise, uh, outliers. All these things are very important. So how to represent better lies in how to transform, basically, okay? So it's how to transform better. So transformation is a very important concept that permeates both machine learning and deep learning. And now we use it, of course, in uh, geometric deep learning or learning on non-Euclidean spaces such as graphs, okay, GNNs. Now, uh, we also have in uh, GNNs um, the, the mixed actions of aggregation and transformation. So, uh, and this defines what we call the generalized propagation rule. So to update the embedding. So this message passing is used to update the embeddings. It could be the graph embedding, the node embedding, the edge embedding, any element of the graph, or the graph itself, okay? So we want to do this update of the embeddings, the representation of the graph or elements uh, of, of the graph, okay? So now we have other things that we will see um, in detail. Also, if you haven't covered this, these are BN and dropout that are very uh, commonly used in deep learning. So if you've taken a deep learning course, you should cover these in detail. Uh, but here the key idea is batch normalization. When you're training your GNN using batches, and we'll see this uh, uh, later and later uh, in future sessions, is that uh, this allows us to stabilize the optimization, to st stabilize the convergence of the laws. And also it can, by controlling actually, why this, this is good uh, to stabilize the optimization because it enables us to control the embedding variance between layers. So the distribution 
of the embedding from k minus one to k, right? Uh, it doesn't change a lot. So if it changes a lot, it's not a good thing. So somehow we want to control this distribution. We want it to be kind of similar, a bit different. Of course, we want to learn different representation. We want them to be the distribution of these embeddings in each layer to be different, but not very divergent, okay? So a very divergent, it means, you know, we're gonna have a large variance in the neural network and uh, the omegas were, we're, we're gonna have different mappings. So it's not, it's not good to have completely different weights, weight jumps from omega K to K plus one, for example, between consecutive layers. So these mappings somehow, their, their weights should be kind of also uh, you know, uh, quite different to extract diverse information, but not very divergent to kind of make the network hard to train and the loss diverges or to have some kind of funky uh, learning behavior. So uh, the dropout basically is, um, here we drop notes to regularize and increase the expressiveness of, um, of a GNN model. And dropouts uh, are very used in... Um, you know, during, so basically during training, you remove nodes and then you bring them back during testing. So here it kind of, you know, uh, decreases somehow you're, you, you don't need to optimize the weight for that node. So uh, dropouts, uh, dropping out nodes is, is a, acts as a regularizer for the network loss. And uh, for the GNS, it also increases the expressiveness of the GNS, which means we can easily distinguish between different topologies and stru graph structures. So we have seen also the, all the purple ones we have seen and also the pink we've seen today. So BN and dropouts, these are things that you can add up to your uh, GNN layer. So you can add a batch normalization, you can add dropout. Usually it comes after the batch normalization and before applying the nonlinearity. So the nonlinearity is actually the activation function. And here it allows us to capture the complexity and identify important patterns. So uh, this is the act the important patterns and also important, you know, dimensions, you know, feature, I would say embedding dimensions, embedding di dimensions, okay? So embedding dimensions, as, as I explained earlier, when you activate, you give a strong response, you maintain it, you want to give a strong response to the important features and nonlinearity allows us to kind of uh, identify the most important features, but also it allows us to give these weights and kind of, you know, capture very complex um, relationship between um, the features and the and also the samples themselves because we were now using graphs, right? So nonlinearity, it what is the the component here that makes the whole network nonlinear or makes it, you know, uh, able to capture. Um, complex patterns and high level patterns, okay? If you use simple linear transformations, we will see that uh, in the first, um, you know, like uh, in, in, in a few examples, we will see that uh, if you remove the nonlinearity, you, you may not be able to kind of do good classification or regression, okay? So that's nonlinearity. Now, the last one um, is the um, prediction hat. So we need to define the target learning task, whether we're doing a, um, uh, whether we're doing, for example, a node classification or a uh, edge, you know, link prediction, or a, a simple um, regression of the whole graph. So here we need to define the, these tasks and their parameters. And this comes, of course, after the nonlinearity. So after we do the whole embedding, so this transformation right here uh, will get us, you know, to the final uh, embedding that we're going to have at some point. And what I want to say that. Well, sometimes this comes in this order, other times I like the order can change. So there are important remarks here I want to add, which is the first one is that, uh, okay, so let's see this. So the first one is that the operation order, the order in which we do these operations, it can change depending on the rationale and the target task, okay? So, and then also a few operations operations can be merged or completely removed. So you can remove a dropout, for example. You can use only uh, what we have used in um, in a naive GCN is basically these three, right? And then we added later on, we added the prediction hat for the task. So this is for our target task, yeah? So these operations here, they're not necessarily executed in the order I mentioned here. So they can, the order can change we can merge few operations, combine them together. Uh, we can remove a few operations in a in a in a in a layer 
in a GCN or JNN layer, okay, one layer. And then, uh, yeah, so there are different things we can do. And so you define one layer and then you can stack up multiple layers uh, to do uh, to repeat the same operation, series of operations uh, over and over again after you define them. So now these are very important questions. So look, we have multiple operations here, guys. We have aggregation, transformation. Uh, we have the uh, um, you know propagation rule, have batch normalization, dropout. We have the type of activation function we want to use. And we have the, of course, we need to fix and define the type of prediction task that we want to solve. And all of these, okay, so we need to ask for each of one of these, we need to ask the second question, which is very important. This is a very important question, okay? So how and when to perform an operation? And of course, why? Why would we need batch normalization? Why would we need a dropout? Why would we need to add the prediction head there? Why would we need to kind of do pooling or whatever, okay? So for example, there are several GNN papers that uh, use, you know, that uh, aggregate and transform in, 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 in a completely different order. So when, how and when to aggregate and transform? These are very important questions and they will completely uh, shift your narrative and your results, okay? So for example, so far we, uh, we have aggregated first and then transform. But what you can also do, you can transform first, okay? And then aggregate. Uh, the the features. So you can say, I want to apply nonlinearity. I want to kind of, sorry, linear transform the data and then aggregate it rather than aggregating and transforming what I have aggregated or combined. And these are, these are of course, you know, each of these choices needs to be justified and explained. And, uh, you know, there should be a logic behind these, uh, this design, the design that you will choose for your, your network based on empirical evidence or preliminary data that you have, or based simply on um, uh, nicely, I would say robustly on some mathematical um, foundation. Okay, good. So uh, next we will look at a few of these operations like, like BN dropout, also the concept of batching how we batch, you know, uh, how we do uh, batching uh, in uh, graph neural uh, networks.